Hello students, in today's class we are going to see about utilization of leftovers. What are leftovers? The uneaten edible remains of a meal after the meal is over and everyone has finished eating are called as leftovers. Scraps of food such as bones or the skins of some vegetables and fruits that are not edible are considered as waste material. Any other remaining edible portion constitutes the leftovers. Factors such as the place where the meal was eaten, the preferences of the diner and the existing social culture have to be considered in dealing with leftovers. Hotels can obtain financial as well as environmental benefits by adopting few simple steps to waste less and recycle more and by working out the cost of food waste to the business. Each time food is wasted, the water, energy, time, manpower, land, fertilizer, fuel, packaging and money utilized for growing, preparing, storing, transporting and cooking the food is waste. Now after studying about the utilization of leftovers, you will be able to understand the ways of dealing with leftovers, creative ways of utilization of leftover food, leftovers and food safety, new habits developed by hotels to reduce leftovers and their benefits. Now let us see about utilization of leftovers. Leftovers at home are generally saved to be eaten later. Leftover foods can be stored in airtight containers and refrigerated. Some of the leftover food can be eaten cold from the refrigerator while other foods can be reheated in a microwave or mixed with other ingredients and recooked to make a new dish. Leftovers are used to make new dishes which are quite common in world cuisine. Such new cuisines were created very early in the days before refrigerators and airtight containers existed. In hotel kitchens, nutrients are extracted from inedible bones in the form of stalks and broths. These stalks and broths can be used as a base for adding leftover morsels of food that are too small to be a meal in themselves. Leftovers can also be used in the preparation of casseroles, fried rice, shepherd's pie and pizza. Instead of just throwing away leftover food, the best way to extract value from a meal is to utilize every bit of it. This not only helps to reduce waste, but also helps to reduce the cost per meal. The only problem with this is that leftover food is not very tasty for the palate, so it has to be efficiently reused. Now let, let us see about the leftovers in hotel. A large portion of the waste produced in hotels and lodging facilities comprises of food waste. Some of the reasons which lead to accumulation of food waste are over preparation, table scraps, cooking losses and packaging failures. The steps involved in creating food waste reduction program may involve the following. The executive chef will monitor the food inventory the amount of food per meal and the percent of waste per meal. This will help to reduce the quantity of food waste. The executive chef will regularly check the amount and type of food commonly disposed in the recycling containers and will determine the foods that can be reused. He will also help to decide how to revise the food preparation procedures to reduce food waste. Some fine dining restaurants employ food controllers whose duty will be 
to check spoilage and wastage of food which will help in cutting costs. Now let us see certain effective ways of reusing leftover food and beverages. Leftover cola can be used in the preparation of barbecue sauce. A sweet tangy barbecue sauce can be obtained after the cola and other ingredients are simmered together. This sauce will last for several months if stored in the refrigerator. Similarly, leftover dark sodas can be used in the preparation of thick and flavorful sauces. Leftover Sprite, 7up or some other brand of lemon lime soda can be used to make delicious flaky biscuits. The clear citrus soda adds flavor, lightness and mild sweetness to the biscuits. Citrus soda can be used to prevent fruits from browning reaction. Cut fruits can be soaked in the soda to maintain freshness in the preparation of fruit salad. However, use of citrus soda will increase the sugar content of the fruit salad. Leftover coffee can be used instead of water in cake batter in preparing a cake, especially chocolate cake or brownies for a little added flavor. Leftover coffee can also be combined with milk, cream, eggs and sugar to make coffee ice cream. Now let us see how to utilize leftover bread. Leftover slices of bread can be used to make French toast for breakfast. The moisture in the batter used to prepare French toast and the heat used to cook it helps to soften the bread in addition to giving flavor. Leftover slices of bread can be used to make bread pudding. They can also be diced and used to prepare croutons for salads or soups. Now what can be done with leftover cheese? Leftover cheese can be used to make a cheese sauce called fromage fort. This sauce can be made by combining leftover cheese, salt, pepper, garlic and a little white wine. This can be put on crackers which is a baked good typically made from flour. The cheese sauce can also be melted on cheese toast. Leftover rinds of parmesan cheese can be used to enhance the flavor of soups. All the leftover cheese can be melted together and used to make fondue which is a hot dish made of melted cheese and wine and eaten with bread. Now let us see what can be done with leftover meat and poultry. Leftover carcass of chicken or beef or pork can be simmered with some vegetables to make chicken stock or beef stock or pork stock. Leftover chicken can be cut into small strips and served with lettuce, tomatoes, mayonnaise sauce, shredded cheese, a tomato based spicy sauce called salsa and used as a savory filling for tortillas to make tasty wraps. Leftover steak which has become very tough can be revitalized and tenderized by making beef stew with it. As the stew will be simmered slowly, the meat will be tenderized and made juicy and succulent again. Leftover steak can be cut into small pieces and to this a can of kidney beans can be added along with a can of diced tomatoes, a can of tomato juice and chili powder. This can be simmered for one or two hours and then eaten. The leftover meatloaf can be cut into small cubes and to this a can of tomato sauce, little of herbs such as basil and oregano can be added and then allowed to simmer. 
Some boiled pasta can be added to this mixture. The liquid from the leftover beef stew can be drained off and the remaining meat and vegetables can be ground using a food processor. This mixture can be scrambled with eggs to make a tasty scrambled egg dish. Leftover ham can be chopped into small bite-sized pieces, put into a pot and to this chopped potatoes and green beans can be added along with water and salt and pepper to taste. This mixture should be simmered for one to two hours to make a delicious soup. Now we'll see what can be done with leftover pot roast. Pot roast is generally a piece of meat cooked slowly in a covered dish. Normally there will be abundant leftover after cooking a pot roast with onions, carrots, celery and potatoes. Instead of reheating the leftover pot roast, the vegetables can be put into a food processor with some of the broth and made into a puree. To this mixture, breadcrumbs can be added and patties which are small flat cakes of minced meat are formed from it. The patties are then cooked in a frying pan over medium heat with little oil until they are light brown on both sides. A little cheese can be added to the mixture but that is purely optional. Now let us see what can be done with leftover ice cream. Leftover ice cream can be mixed with some self rising flour to make delicious muffins which are small domed spongy cakes made with eggs and baking powder. Leftover hard candies can be used to make flavored vodka by soaking the candies in vodka overnight. Now what could be done with leftover fruits and vegetables? Leftover pulp after the preparation of fresh juices can be combined with water, cinnamon and ginger, simmered and strained to make a healthy flavorful fruit tea. Leftover pulp of fruit juices can be added in baking of muffins, cakes and cookies for added texture and flavor. Leftover citrus peel scraps can be used to season stews and tomato sauces. Leftover pulp of vegetables can be baked to make veggie crackers. Leftover bits of chopped vegetables can be simmered to make vegetable stock. Leftover mashed potatoes can be frozen in small amounts in paper bags and can be used in recipes instead of flour. In any recipe, one part mashed potatoes can be used with two parts flour. Leftover fruits can be put in a blender with some soya milk, peanut butter and made into exceptional smoothies. A smoothie is a thick smooth drink consisting of fresh fruit pureed with ice cream or yogurt or milk. Now if there is leftover spaghetti that can be chopped into small pieces and mixed with the sauce. This mixture can be poured into a loaf pan coated with a layer of mozzarella cheese and baked in the oven at 350 degrees until the cheese just begins to turn brown. If there is leftover rice, it can be mixed with pancake batter to make pancakes. A pancake is a thin flat cake of batter fried on both sides in a pan and rolled up with a sweet or savory filling. Now let us see the leftover foods to be reused in a buffet. All hotels should calculate the requirements for the day. Three months after beginning operations, a hotel can experiment by the addition of one kilo 
to the quantity ordered of each food item till an optimum level is reached. Any other perishable product is ordered according to the need. In case 20 chickens are marinated and 14 to 15 are sold, the rest can be sent to the quick service restaurant where rolls, kebabs and sandwiches will be served between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. However, during festival period there may be wastage of food as it is difficult to estimate the footfall at that time. Now, leftovers and food safety is of great concern. Food should be cooked to a safe temperature and the leftovers should be refrigerated promptly in order to ensure that leftovers are safe to eat. The two main causes of foodborne illness are not cooking food to a safe temperature and leaving food out at an unsafe temperature. Leftovers should be handled safely in order to reduce foodborne illness. Now let us see what are the factors to be considered in handling leftovers and food safety. Foods should be cooked safely. The first step in having leftovers is cooking the food safely. A food thermometer should be used to ensure that the food is cooked to a safe minimum internal temperature. Red meats. In the case of red meats like raw beef, pork, lamb and veal steaks, chops and roasts, all these should be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature should be measured with a food thermometer before removing the meat from heat. For safety and quality, meat should be allowed to rest for at least 3 minutes before being carved or consumed. In the case of ground meats, raw ground beef, pork, lamb and veal should be cooked to an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Poultry should be cooked to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And how do we keep food out of the danger zone? The ideal temperature for bacterial growth is between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Once food is safely cooked, Hot food must be kept hot at 140 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent bacterial growth. Leftovers must be refrigerated within two hours of cooking the food. All perishable foods that have been left at room temperature for more than two hours should be discarded. Cold perishable food, for example chicken salad, should be kept at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. When food is served at a buffet, hot foods should be kept hot in chafing dishes and cold foods in bowls of ice. Cold leftovers that have been left out for more than two hours at room temperature should be discarded. Foods should be cooled rapidly. After cooking, it is important to cool food rapidly to a temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below in order to prevent growth of bacteria. This can be done by dividing large amounts of food into small portions and placing in shallow containers. Similarly, large items of food like whole roasts or hams can be cut or sliced into smaller portions to cool. Hot foods can be rapidly chilled in an ice or cold water bath and then refrigerated. Leftover foods should be wrapped well. Leftover foods should be wrapped in airtight packaging or sealed in storage containers. This helps to prevent bacterial growth 
helps to retain moisture and also helps to prevent leftovers from picking up odors from other foods in the refrigerator. The wrapped leftover foods should be refrigerated or frozen immediately for rapid cooling. Leftovers should be stored safely. Leftovers can be stored in the refrigerator for three to four days or in the freezer for three to four months. However, frozen leftover foods can lose moisture and flavor when stored for longer period of time. Frozen leftovers should be thawed safely. Leftovers can be thawed safely by three ways. In the refrigerator, using cold water or in the microwave oven. The longest time taken to thaw is in the refrigerator. But the leftovers stay safe the entire time. After thawing, the food should be used within three to four days or can be refrozen. The frozen leftovers must be kept in a leak proof package or plastic bag. In case there is leakage of the bag, water can get into the food and bacteria from the air could enter it. The time taken to thaw using cold water is faster than the refrigerator but it requires more attention. Foods that are thawed by the cold water method should be cooked before refreezing. The fastest method of thawing is by microwave. When thawing leftover foods in a microwave it should be heated until it reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Foods thawed in the microwave can be refrozen after heating it to this safe temperature. Leftovers should not be reheated without thawing. Frozen leftover foods can be safely reheated without thawing in a saucepan or oven or microwave. However, the time taken for reheating the food will be longer than if the food is thawed first. Leftovers should be reheated safely. Leftover foods when reheated should reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit as measured with a food thermometer. Sauces, soups and gravies should be reheated by bringing them to a rolling boil. Leftovers should be covered while reheating. This helps to retain moisture and ensures that food will heat all the way through. When food is reheated in the microwave, it should be covered and rotated for even heating. The food items should be arranged evenly in a covered glass or ceramic dish and some liquid can be added if required. The moist heat that is created will help to destroy harmful bacteria and will ensure that the food is cooked evenly. The temperature of the food should be checked in several places with a food thermometer and a resting time should be allowed before the internal temperature of the food is checked with a food thermometer. The cooking time is longer in dense foods such as a whole turkey or beef roast than in less dense foods like breads, small vegetables and fruits. Now refreezing previously frozen leftovers. Sometimes there are leftover leftovers. The food remaining after reheating to a temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit can be refrozen safely. In case only a portion of the frozen leftover food is required, the entire food can be thawed in the refrigerator and the required portion can be removed and the rest be refrozen without reheating. Now let us see 
some new habits which have been developed by hotels to reduce leftovers. Buffets and in-room dining is an integral part of the hospitality experience. But all the leftovers, once guests have finished eating, will be hauled off to landfills at a great cost to the establishment and an even greater cost to the environment. To combat this situation, hotels have started developing new habits to reduce leftovers. Now reducing food waste. The first step a hotel can take is reduction in the amount of food produced. Reduction in portions of food will play an important role in reduction of waste. Next one is using food inventory techniques. Reduction in food cost can be brought about by reducing waste of perishable food which in turn can be achieved by adopting an organized inventory process. Composting and donating edible food. Most of the hotels have their own composting systems. In case leftover food is to be donated, it has to be ensured that food meets safety standards. Working with suppliers and vendors. Reduction in food cost and subsequently reduction in food waste can be achieved by substituting special ingredients with alternatives. Training of staff. All the employees should be given training and food waste reduction can be made a part of their job description. The training that can be imparted to staff in hotels can include conduct of workshops by environmental waste management companies to educate hotel staff and committee members. Incorporation of information and policies into training and hotel orientation. Making the reduction of food waste a priority. Change in the size of serving and garnishes. Conduct of audits of various areas to ensure that proper recycling procedures are followed. Now let us see what are the benefits of reducing leftovers. The first one is environmental benefits. If leftover food is not utilized effectively and if wasted and thrown in with the landfill, it will rot and become a major source of methane gas. By reducing wasted food, it is possible to reduce greenhouse gas emission as 14% of greenhouse gases are associated with growing, manufacturing, transporting and disposing of food. What are the economic benefits? If the amount of food wasted is decreased, hotels need to pay less for the disposal of their trash. If food waste is prevented, hotels can reduce their costs by purchasing only the food that will be used. This in turn will also help to increase efficiency of staff and reduce the amount of energy and labor associated with the disposal process. Now let us see the social benefits. Hotels can donate safe and healthy leftover food to feed those in need. Now to conclude, the output of waste is increasing at an alarming rate and studies indicate that 40% of the accumulated waste is brought on by food. It has been found that food waste emits 20% to 25% of carbon dioxide which contributes to global warming. The control of food waste should be directed at the hospitality sector, most significantly the hotel segment. 
the hotel industry has realized the need for a more sustainable environment and has taken steps to reduce food waste. So to conclude, we have seen the leftovers, how to handle leftovers, how to handle leftovers safely and what are the benefits of effectively utilizing leftover foods. Thank you.